Hello, hello. I'm on the... Testing the audio real quick. Hello, hello. I'm on the... Testing the audio real quick. All right. All right, we are ready. So, today, uh, the whole world got hit with another cybersecurity attack. Um, it was another ransomware that looks a lot similar to the last one a month ago that was called WannaCry. Um, and it appeared to be pretty much the same thing at first because it exploited the same vulnerability, which was a, 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 a flaw in Microsoft, uh, an old, old protocol they used, and um, it was one the NSA not only knew about, but they developed it. So um, that's why a lot of people are not too happy with them right now. So the, uh, the developments with this are, um, so far, as far as I can tell, the this has infected way more than WannaCry. Um, it's it's hit the U.S. which WannaCry. I don't think it, it, it hit it at all. And um, it hit. It, it, people are saying it it likely emerged because some hackers hit a Ukrainian uh, software or no, uh, sorry, um, a Ukrainian financial securities document company and uh, had them send uh, or basically attack everyone from there. They basically used them as botnet. Um, and let's see. But that's, that's speculation right now. That's where it seems to be coming from. But um, it's also possible they just... I don't know that the, the company just did it themselves and they're, they're evil or something, who knows. Also, um, what else, um, hang on a second. Let's see, uh, okay, yeah, so, uh, it looks like WannaCry. Because it, 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 it's the it, same thing, it's ransomware asking for the same amount of money, exploited the same vulnerability. Um, but then we quickly realized that patching that vulnerability didn't, didn't fix the problem. Um, that, that would have been an easy fix. I mean, people should have already, I mean, all you have to do is update your windows and you're not vulnerable. But some people don't. And shame on you. you. Should I say that from a security perspective? And let's see. Um, so um, I'm forgetting. Oh yeah. Um, it it was not wanna cry. Uh, it it was actually something much much nastier. There was something lurking and just kind of waiting. So it, it would try the easy exploit first, which is WannaCry. And it, it, it at this point it looks like the, um, what, it's also Petya, is actually what the original one that it looked like was Petya. But uh, then they realized, oh, this is different because it's far, far nastier. Uh, after the easy exploit fails, it, it has two different attack vectors that it will try, but it doesn't try them right away. It'll just kind of cycle, and it, 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 they, they have a whole botnet just kind of hitting uh, as many different IPs as they can, saying, hey, maybe this guy's vulnerable, hey, maybe this guy's vulnerable. And um, so uh, it was, uh, I think it was uh, 
it was, it was either Kaspersky or uh, Symantec who, who, who said, um, we originally thought it was Petya, but it turned out it wasn't, so we're going to call it not Petya. Um, that wasn't clever enough, so everyone's just calling it Petya, not Petya. Not everyone, but that's, that's what seems to have stuck so far. Um, let's see. What are the drugs? Oh yeah, also a, um, an American nuclear power plant has been hit by this. And <laughs> that sounds really bad, uh, but it's not. Uh, I mean, they, they've said, yes, we're infected, but it's not a, it's not a danger because, believe it or not, those big, you know, power nuclear machines don't run windows. So... <laughs> They most likely some desktops in their offices got hit. Which is still alarming and unfortunate, but it's, it's not, you know, meltdown death and all. So that's good. Um, let's see, so it's ransomware. They, uh, basically what they do is downloads onto your computer and encrypts your entire hard drive. So it'll reboot and it'll say, please don't shut down, we're running a scan. And while it says it's running a scan, it's actually encrypting your entire hard drive. Um, it's possible that's a re reversible encryption, but we don't really know because nobody's, either in WannaCry or this one, nobody's ever been able to recover. Basically, your data's gone. So, um, but what they say is, you send us $300 in Bitcoin and we will send you the decryption key. And so far, out of all the thousands of people who've been hit, tens of thousands, 27 people paid the ransom, which means they made a grand total of three Bitcoin, less than $9,000. <laughs> it doesn't seem like a very good return on investment, and you piss a lot of people off. But also, I, I, their, the email server who realized they were hosting the hacker's email that was receiving or that was sending out the basically the decryption key supposedly once they realized they were hosting it's like no we're not going to host this hacker and they shut him down and that that sounds bad because it's like well, well now nobody has any chance of getting their data back but the truth is well sorry nobody ever did have a chance of getting their data back this was the right thing to do i don't let people pay the ransom. Let, <laughs> lose your data, don't lose your data and your money. Uh, Alright. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spam here on Twitter that I'm spamming. I think some people might be interested. already patched for the WannaCry safe. No, they are not. That's the thing. WannaCry was the decoy. The real threat was lying underneath. I'm gonna tell that guy this.
cold, baby, kills the bees. Sometimes you gotta stay again. And you know where I live. Yeah, you know what we get. Nice and easy. Big, big flip. There is a way. Oh, oh, I don't know how to explain that now. Um, okay. So, deep dive into. I think I already read this. Um, I, let me go and I look at that in a second. Alright. How good it, Okay, that's what we're talking about here. Um,. In fact, I will go into even more detail um, on how these actually work in a second. Um, let's see. That's the worst, worst one I've seen yet. Um, hmm. New variant of Petia spreading like wildfire. My food logs. Um, let's, let's look at this deep dive. What are they saying? Let me know. This is a new variant of the Petia. Okay, that's... It's like a... It's like... It's like... Petia's... Big evil brother hiding around the corner. More like... Um... It has several similarities to the Global One Cry album. Uh, yes. With some significant differences. Yes, that's true. There's no kill switch. The reason there's no kill switch is that uh, with, with, uh, um, I, I guess there's no kill switch yet. There may be. Uh, if, if, if Windows is able to roll out an update very quickly. But, um, but that would still rely on people. It's not an update, which I don't. Um, but uh, anyway, um, yeah, there's no kill switch because the, the, the Petya relied on, um, yeah, basically a, a known vulnerability in Windows. It was a vulnerability from a security protocol, not a, a network protocol called SMB v1. Server, simple mes server message. I don't know. Um, it's their file sharing protocol, and version one has been deprecated since 2006. Uh, since then, they've been using by by default uh, SMB two and SMB three. So, um, but the thing is, they they still leave SMB v one enabled, even though there aren't services that use it. But it's still, if you don't have your firewall on, people from the internet can still probe you, which is bad. Um, so, uh, that was a known vulnerability. That's why they were able to shut it down. Um, basically, it just say, install your damn updates and you're safe. Uh, and it's, it's over. This is nasty, though, because it's, it's using basically a more time-tested technique, just abusing admin tools, which, um, one of them is PS Exec, it's a, it's a, it's a program, uh, from, from Sys Internals, which is a, was a website developed, or created by a guy, Mark, Russ, Mark, Russ, Rusinovich, I think is his name, um, yes, uh, so, he, and apparently he's CTO of Azure now, but he started by making sys internals, and one of those tools in sys internals was um, uh, PS Exec, which is a a very powerful. <laughs> it's kind of it it gets under the hood of window of Windows the way software is really not supposed to, and it it allows you to kind of have a super god level of access if, if you're using it on your own machine basically you can run you know how if you're on windows you can say right click run as administrator this gets even higher and it runs you as system um and uh but that's not a, the, the actual purpose of the software is to uh, basically connect to a remote machine and open a command prompt that that's the purpose of it 
Uh, it, it, it's a useful tool for that purpose, but it's also an extremely useful tool for hackers. Because not only do you have like, that really low level access you're really not supposed to, but it gives you access remotely from the network to get in there. And so, basically, if they, uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly how this one works, but uh, they're, they're attacking using that software, just probing around, saying, hey, you open it, you know, they, they ask your computer, hey, you know, what, what version are you running? Do you have this port open by chance? No, no, I'm just curious. There's no reason. And, um, so, <laughs> yeah, that's, there's one more, I forgot what it was, because I don't know what it was. What was the other... Well, uh, I'll get I'll get to the, the other attack vector. Um, I'll look I'll look into it um, once I get to it. it. Can spread without relying on SMB vulnerability. Okay, we just talked about that. It reboots victims' computers and encrypts digital hard drives. Okay. Um, so I I don't know how the original one worked. I, I suppose what it did was maybe just uh, while you're on Windows and encrypt, encrypt, uh, encrypted your data. Or, probably corrupts your data, probably. Well, no, it actually... It probably does actually encrypt your data. If they wanted to destroy your data, that would be a pretty simple operation. You just, you just mess it up. That's, that's not a very difficult operation to do, even on a large amount of data. But they want... If they're... It's actually a slow process. They're saying, this version is kind of nice because you reboot your computer and you get a screen that says we have to run this scan on your computer uh, there's a screen file somewhere um, yeah repairing file system on C um, do not turn off your PC no matter what you do blah 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 and of course they say that because what they're actually doing right now is encrypting all your data and you're never going to get it back so the reality is the opposite of what this says. If you ever want to see your data again, turn off your computer when you see this screen. Uh, so, the scope of the threat. This attack is widespread and does not appear to be targeting... Yes, that's true. Yes, Ukrainian organizations, that's why. Because of that one Ukrainian company that seems to be the source of the attacks. Um, though people don't think the company is responsible, they think they were hacked, likely by Russian hackers. Um, so let's see what else. Yep. <laughs> Poor Chernobyl. Ah, boy. Last line enterprises deep content. Deep content. Um, okay, this is, this is why they just score, you know, whatever, it's not very interesting. Uh, how it spreads, okay. Yes, okay, so, um, yes, okay, so here's the, here's the, the first thing is that, uh, it's important to understand that this is not a worm. It's not a, a virus that, that spreads in the, the sense that you would think a, 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 a worm would. So if your computer gets it, then any computer that you're connected to is going to get it. I mean, that's actually likely because if you're vulnerable, they're also vulnerable. But if they get it, they're not going to get it from you. Um, so it, it, it can spread locally using the Eternal Blue exploit. So what's that, what that means is if, if I'm a remote... Uh, evil guy, and uh, I want to target your, you know, your company. And uh, if you have you have horrible network security at your company. And I'm able to get inside. Like I'm able to get into one of your your machines. Maybe maybe say you don't have a a, a, a NAT network address translation. You don't have a firewall. All your all your computers are open to the world. And oh. Okay, music's coming down. Sorry about that. Ugh.
Is that better? Sorry, I, I spent a lot of time messing around with the audio on this. I couldn't quite get it right. Um, anyway, okay, so. Um, excellent. Glad to hear. Thanks for watching, by the way. I thought I was talking to myself here. Um, where was I? Um, okay, yeah. So, step one, the easiest, the easiest way for it to, to exploit is if it, if it gets inside a network, and uh, that machine can, from that machine, you can target all the other machines in there. Because you can basically get a shell, like get, get access or get a command prompt from the one machine and use that one as your base to send out to all the other machines within the local network. And uh, that w that's easiest for the Eternal Blue exploit, which was the one that, that was the one that WannaCry did. It was, it's the one that most people have patched by now because of WannaCry. It's the one that um, we, uh, let's see. It was leaked in August of last year, but the NSA has known about it for something like five years, and they didn't let anybody know that this was an exploit. Um, and not, not, not only did they know that it was a vulnerability, they developed the exploit. <laughs> so, I mean, basically, it's a hacking tool made by the NSA that got leaked to the open and now nefarious hackers are doing this shit with it. Um, or PS Exec, that was the one I was mentioning earlier, the Sys Internals utility d designed for um, uh, b opening a, a command prompt on a remote system that also gives you higher levels than you're supposed to get to. All right. So, this is the Ukrainian company that appears to be the source of it, but nobody thinks, or not many people think are actually behind it. They were probably hacked, according to Edward Snowden. It's reasonable to think it was Russian hackers, uh, because we know Russian hackers have exploits from the NSA. So, it's reasonable to assume that. Uh, Casper Z reports that it can spread by the remote code execution exploit ransomware Mimi cats to extract admin credentials. Okay. And pass them. Okay, yeah, that's one of the, the, uh, the I guess, the problems with uh, just running a general, you know, a, a Windows desktop when you're not on a domain is, uh, it's, it's, you can get passwords. Uh, you can, you can, if you have software with low enough access, you have, or high enough access, I suppose, y you, your software can locate exactly where the password hashes are, decrypt them, and send all your local passwords back to someone. Uh, that's, that's a, I mean, it's it's something you deal with uh, with any desktop, really. Um, the best defense for this is to, to be a part of a domain, as in, like, you know, if you're working for a company or at a school or something, you you have your computer as part of the domain, and all the passwords are stored on the domain server, and uh, your server is. Um, gonna have a lot higher, well, it should have a lot higher security than your desktops. Your desktops should have security too, but people are lazy. So, <laughs> it is called Misha. Oh, uh, I, I didn't know that. Okay, so, uh, Petya and Misha are the two satellites for Goldeneye, from Goldeneye, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. I, uh, <laughs> I'm so glad to see that. Um, okay. So Misha is the part that uh, in, that okay reboots and encrypts your files. Again, if you reboot your computer and see this screen, it says do not turn off your PC. Please turn off your PC. That's the only way to save your data. <laughs> this screen is a lie. Don't run any disk checks for Windows for 
a little while. You'll you'll be fine. Um, okay. Uh, it covers tracks. It clears. Ooh, that's clever. But, but <laughs> you, you, once your you, once your data is gone, I mean, who cares about the event log? That's going to be gone too. Um, Demands three hundred dollars in Bitcoin. You can monitor the payments here. I'm guessing it's still at like three Bitcoin. Three point three. Yeah. Um, they 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 shut down the mail server. I. I guess so the mail server was running to send out their address or something um, I mean anybody can still send bitcoins there if they want to but I mean people are writing uh, if drive is yes um, because uh, if you're running Windows you're 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 in an environment so like as that the files that you're accessing in Windows, are decrypted while you're using them because otherwise they're unusable. They're gibberish when they're encrypted. So what it does is it it'll wait for you to reboot, and then when you know once it's booting up, it'll say we need to encrypt everything. Now, data that's encrypted, you can just encrypt it again. It it doesn't care. Like there's nothing preventing it. You just take a block, encrypt it. Take another block, encrypt it. Take another block, encrypt it. You don't care what that data is. Um, you can take the same block and encrypt it a thousand different times, a thousand different ways. Um, the the uh, Having your drive in, encrypted won't prevent you or won't save you from this attack. What it would save you from is if, uh, say, uh, you're... The, the, the benefit of drive encryption is, say, somebody breaks into your house and steals your hard drive, um, and they, they, you know, plug it into their computer and they want to steal all your files, well then they can't, now they can't understand what your files are because they're gibberish. That, yeah, yeah, um, so, um, anyway. Yeah, nobody's sending them Bitcoin anymore. People, I'm glad people are smart enough. Um, and it, let's see, other techniques to use. Okay, what to do about it? Patches. Yes, do this. Um, if you are not aware, um, this this security update for Windows SMB. So, so this is the thing that actually patches the vulnerability. Um, there's a lot of things you can do to save you from this um, even you know if you just run your regular Windows update you already have this um, also I what I'm doing on my machines is disabling SMB v1 altogether because it's uh, it, it, just because they found and fixed this one hole doesn't mean there's not gonna be a million others I mean th this SMB v1 um, server server message block. That's what it is. SMB v1 has been deprecated since 2006, which means Windows or Microsoft has not been doing any kind of updates on it since 2006. Um, for some unknown reason, they still leave it enabled in all versions of Windows, uh, and you you can go in you uh, on your own machine and you can just say disable it. Disable it altogether, and uh, if you're running, you know, Windows 7, Windows 10, uh, you'll be fine. It, it won't break anything. Disabling this, uh, I encourage everyone to disable SMV, SMB v point, <laughs> SMB v1. Um, okay, so run your Windows updates. Uh, let's see, block. Okay. Yeah, okay. Now this is this is good. WIMC. This was the one... Did they mention this earlier? Because this is the one I wasn't really familiar with. Did they mention that? WMIC. Oh, okay. So that's another... There these... I guess it's similar to W... WM... Or sorry to... I can't even talk. Similar to PS Exec. WMIC. Um... So block them using App Locker. Um, that's one way. I have never used App Locker. Uh, you, 
You can look that up. Um, yeah, let's look at this real quick. Yeah, vaccine, not kill switch. Basically, you know, we have individual fixes we can offer out to the world, but the way people are, you know, two percent of people are going to do it, and that's that's why these things keep happening. It's it's not because. Uh, computer security is so amazing but the hackers are just so much better that's why they keep winning it's like no people are lazy they don't do their updates they don't install patches even like sysadmins who do this for a living don't install their updates don't know they're just lazy and that's that's why this sort of thing keeps happening if people would just just install your updates that's that's all I gotta say okie dokie um, so researchers flocked to find kill switch mechanism. I mean, if you're a, if you're a guy who's you know, who saw the, the previous attack, um, uh, Wanna Cry, I guess based on Petya, there, there's like a million different names for it. If you saw that and they saw, oh, it got shut down with just one kill switch. All right, now. And you want and you want to do the same attack? You're gonna say, okay, well, let's design one without a kill switch. <laughs> that would be the smart thing to do. So they want to be able to continue to attack all the machines on the planet until every single one fixes itself. That that's their dream. Um, I, I I would be willing to bet that it's on Microsoft right now to to put out an emergency fix they're they're probably working around the clock right now to say like push out a forced update to windows saying install this you you need to install this um i don't know how it would work um because this isn't this isn't the sort of thing you can do on a windows update because people actually use these things for legitimate purposes uh, but that, the, the those there's other ways to to block that um oh cool this guy made a wait is it... oh okay this is the whole um oh this blocks everything right here okay this guy made a batch file for it i'm gonna paste this in the, in the chat so you guys can um Yeah, okay, so this is what I did on my computer, is there's this file called, uh, I don't think it was called perf, I thought it was called perfc.dat. Um, that's all they're calling it? Well, maybe it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, what you, what you want to do is, it, it, it uses this file that may or may not already exist in your Windows folder. Uh, C windows and it uh, it will either create it if it doesn't exist or use it as its way of entry um, as because it, it kind of if it has access to the windows folder then it has access to all the files with default access in the windows folder so it can use that as its way of entry and use that it, it, it injects code it's it's a it's a, called a buffer overflow attack so they send a very large packet and they tell windows oh this packet's really small and so that windows takes in the whole packet it reads this much but then the rest of the code way up there it overwrites windows code it overwrites the return address of the function they called it and then it overwrites it to my code up here, and then up here I have whatever code I want. That's a very brief buffer overflow <laughs> intro. Um, and um, oh, wh where was I? Okay, yeah, so uh, it'll use this file, perfc, and um, basically use that to, um, it, it, it is, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly how it works within that, but basically it's running code inside the call stack. It's not in a file, it's in memory. 
and that code is copying evil data to your computer. Uh, it, it'll copy everything it needs, and disconnect, and you're infected. And then it returns back to center and says, we got him. Yeah. Um, a lot of the time, it just doesn't work. Sometimes they do it and it run, hits a blue screen of death, crashes their computer. Uh, you know, it's just hit or miss. It's, it seems to be random chance, they're saying. Uh, but uh, uh, they don't care. <laughs> it's like they're just going to, I mean, it doesn't cost them anything to send out, you know, an attack to just thousands and thousands of computers per second. Yeah, even more, I don't know. I don't know. How. But um, it doesn't cost them anything to keep trying. And so if, if they send you a packet and it causes your computer to blue screen, whoops, try the next guy. Sucks for you. They don't care. Um, okay, so here you you create this, this file in your C Windows folder. Um, I thought it was called perfc.dat. They're calling it perfc. And uh, just a blank file. Uh, you can do create text file um, and then rename it to perfc. And then uh, go into this. I uh, was oh, just saying. Okay. So then. What is going on here? This is different from what I did, actually. I, I, this is one way to do it. Uh, the way I did it, you just create a blank file called perfc.dat, and you go into, I don't know if they do the permissions thing. They should. No? Oh, OK. You mark it as read only. That, that, that will work, um, because if you have an existing file there that is just, it's marked as you can't touch this. and some foreign software comes in and says, hey, I need to write here. Windows says, no, this is read only. Uh, I went a little more hardcore than that. And I went to the security tab and I removed everyone's permissions for anything to the file. So it's a file that is untouchable by Windows permissions. I, I have the permission to give myself permissions back, um, but this code is not that Sophisticated. It's sophisticated, but it's not not quite that sophisticated. So I just remove all the permissions, like absolutely everything. Nothing can read it. Nothing can write it. Certainly, nothing can execute it. That's the bad thing. Um, and um, once once you block this file called C Windows Perf C, that that seems to take care of it because that's their point of entry. So that's that. Um, I think. Oh, I think we finished with this article. Um, yeah, we're pretty much done here. Uh, I was on here a while ago. So what was this? What we know so far about Petya Goldeneye ransomware. Um, Petya malware surfaced last year and crashes computers. Okay, so the Petya part is the part that that um, that does the, that's the malware portion of it. Um, I'm not sure what the technical term for it is. Dubbed Petya, whatever. Um, let's see. Almost, uh, haha. Okay, this this one. Okay, the, so the I guess the ransomware portion may be almost identical to what emerged last December, but this is much nastier. Um, okay, so this has two layers of encryption. Wow, that's just that's that's just a dick move. I mean. People aren't going to be able to decrypt one layer. What's the point? In fact, that's that's kind of stupid in my opinion because this is a, it's a slow process to encrypt it. The, it, it you know, you boot up, it says uh, scanning your files, and they say it takes 10 minutes to an hour for this to happen. 
So any point during that time, you can you can power your computer and save you know half your data, presumably. I think you're you have to extract your your files somehow, but because um, you can't boot Windows anymore at that point. But I don't know why they, why they would do this um, for an extra layer of encryption that nobody's going to be able to break anyway and make it take a lot longer. That's dumb in my opinion, but. Eh. Hackers don't have to be smart. Um, okay. Crips the entire hard drive. Okay. There's no workaround for... Oh, no workaround. It also keeps crashing the computer to trigger a reboot until the ransom is paid. Interesting. I, I guess the old version had a flaw in that you, you could get a decryption key without paying. Um, I, I would. I don't know about that really, but okay. Petya, not Petya, Peter Rap, and Discoder.c. That one's clever. Discoder.c. <laughs> Ransomware epidemic abuse start in Ukraine. Yep. Yeah, they, they outright say that the co the company that's sending out all the the attacks was hacked. Um, you know, I think this is all stuff we've been over. The, the uh, something I read really interesting earlier was a, a series of tweets by Edward Snowden. Um, his, his Twitter is pretty interesting right now. I think it was the top one over here. Yeah. Okay, what's he saying? Um, okay, let's retweet. Okay, yeah, listen, people can disagree on surveillance, but NSA Gov's focus on offense over defense shuts down U.S. hospitals, it's time to act. Yeah, I mean, but who are we going to vote for who opposes surveillance? <laughs> it's, it's surveillance or surveillance as far as uh, I can tell. Um, these are from earlier in the day before they knew as much as they knew now. Yeah, uh, so... The, uh, I read about the backstory between um, the NSA and these hacker groups responsible and um, the series of events leading up to this is starting from around August last year and it was really, really fascinating. Uh, basically around August of last year, a group, I think they called themselves the Broker, broker or something. Ah, oh, crap, I forgot now. Broke or something it's from Mass Effect, they say. Um, hacker group re released a a statement on Pastebin, really broken English, saying we have really powerful hacking tools, super powerful. You know this this other hacking group, which I also forgot the name of, starts with an E. Uh, we, we hacked them and got all their hacking tools. And they got all their stuff from, you know, governments. They target governments. They're, they're spying on NSA and um, CIA and, you know, whatever, Russian, UK, whatever their shit is. Um, they're spying on all of them and looking for their malware. And we, we got it all. We got the, the powerful stuff. And... We'll, we'll release it to whoever pays us the most Bitcoin. And their way of enticing people into this was uh, they released bits and pieces um, to, to demonstrate like there, there was something to it. And they released the entire package of all the tools in an encrypted uh, compressed file, like a zip file basically, an encrypted uh, compressed file, GPG or something, 
Um, and so everyone had, it was available to everyone, the, all the tools, except it was an, an encrypted file. Um, and they would release the decryption or the password to it to, to whoever sent them the, the most Bitcoin. Of course, nobody sent them any Bitcoin because nobody's, nobody's going to spend that kind of money. As it's, they're probably hoping for millions of dollars or something for this, which they probably could have gotten if they weren't retarded. Um, but um, I'm completing my train of thought. So yeah, they they released that, and then they realized no nobody was going to send them any bitcoins. So they they started to change the rules a bit, try to entice people a little bit. They said, okay, well we'll actually just sell them, we'll sell them one on one at a time. We're we're on the dark net. We'll be there. You can message us, tell us what you want. We'll tell you the price. And um, still no. <laughs> Nobody bought anything. I don't think, um, but uh, uh, I don't remember how. But they, it, it, it got the, the the password got out, and the everybody now had access to these tools out in the open. So Russia has it. The NSA already had it because it was probably theirs to begin with. Uh, the whole world has it. Not all that many people know how to use it, but dangerous people do. Um, this was uh, around December, I think that article was saying, when Petya was first discovered. And, you know, there were some weak attempts at ransomware um, but, uh, that people were, were getting around and not taking very seriously. Um, fast forward to March of this year. Microsoft, March 14th, Microsoft puts out a critical security bulletin saying, we have just found an enormous security flaw. We, 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 we patched it. You must update Windows. It's marked as a critical security update. They push it out and marked it as critical on every single Windows machine, even on one on some they don't even support anymore. They pushed it out and said, "Install this update." Um, of course, no, <laughs> nobody did. Nobody installs their updates. Uh, <laughs> So this is March, uh, and in April, a month later, um, it's oh, what, what was it? Oh, it was it was revealed. Uh, some somebody came out, and one of the hackers came out and said, "We have an exploit, or we have all these exploits. We're gonna start attacking." I don't know why they do all the theatrics, and nobody knows it's 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 dumb. They're they're being theatrical. Um, they'd probably be more successful if they just quietly asked the government for a ransom. <laughs> but, um, the yeah, they announced we have tons of tools. We're going to start unleashing attacks. Um, and what's suspicious about that is. Uh, one of these is the one that Microsoft patched one month earlier and so the suspicion is that somebody tipped off Microsoft that about this vulnerability somebody tipped them off that this was gonna get out um, unless you think it was one of the hackers who told a Microsoft employee which I don't somebody in the government knew before the people knew. We'll never know. It's pretty suspicious, though. So then, fast forward to May 17th of this year, uh, and WannaCry hits. Uh, big, big, huge deal. I mean, a, a hospital in the UK is hit, a university in the UK is hit, uh, other places in, in Eastern Europe, uh, tens of thousands of machines get hit, a few people pay the ransom, still not very many. Um, basically just a lot of people lost their data um, and you know everybody just says look all you have to do is install your your Windows you don't have to install all the updates just install this patch and you're good that's the the kill switch that they talk about for uh, wanna cry so that was a one-day scare it was bad happened 
probably some people got hurt. I hit a hospital. I, I don't know. But we got over it. And we moved on. Um, still, lots of people didn't patch their computers, though. So it's uh, a month later now. And, and um, Petya, not Petya, whatever you call it, Goldeneye, is hitting. And uh, the first thing we see is, oh god, it's another wanna cry. <laughs> it's the exact same thing, it's the exact same vulnerability they're targeting. If, if only people had patched their shit the first time around, would have been taken care of. And uh, early this morning, I was um, one of these people who were just like, oh, what's this? Well, whatever. Just. At this point, I don't feel sorry. <laughs> you gotta update your systems by this point. Um, didn't pay it much mind. Um, I did warn my coworkers just in case, though. And then uh, a couple hours later, I start to see popping up on Twitter. It's not over. Nope. There's <laughs> this thing is a little more tricky than we thought. It's sneaky that it had a couple more attacks up its sleeve that it, it didn't unveil at first. And I, I don't think that was necessarily a planned thing, not for theatric purposes. I think they just tried the easiest attack vector first, uh, and they hit a number of people with that, uh, but not so many people, not as many people as last time. Uh, and then the, the next round comes, the, the, the PS exec and the WWCIM, I think it was, um, those, start, th those start popping up and people are, like, oh my goodness, wait a minute, I'm patched, I'm still being hit. Whoa, and so the, you know, the, I, I follow the security guys on Twitter, and in fact, this is my first time kind of following along with the events. Um, but everyone's kind of discussing uh, back and forth, like, okay, this is what I found out. This, this is going to, I found that it does this under the hood, and uh, it, it, it finds this, this perfc.dat file, and, um, oh, good, okay, so if we just block that, then, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, it looks like this works, okay, good. Okay, that's a, you know, as they, they said in that article, it's a vaccine, not a kill switch. You can do it on your computer, but we can't fix everyone. Um, and so, and then as the day went on, it's like, well, okay, it's starting to realize, well, the, actually the, the Petya part, the wanna cry part, was actually really small, didn't hit as many people, wasn't very, wasn't very scary, but now we're freaking out about these other ones because we don't know how to, how to fix these, <laughs> and, um, and then, you know, now, at, at this point, basically, I, I, I'm of the opinion, the wanna cry portion, the, 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 the I think what it's, what the, the most official term for that particular exploit is eternal blue. Uh, that's the NSA tool that was leaked that attacks that specific Microsoft vulnerability. So eternal blue was the decoy <laughs> and the real sneaky part was coming later and because now i mean i think people are going to be working for quite a while i mean probably probably until microsoft shoves another another update down people's throats um and we're still going to see another one of these because people just don't I, I i know so many people um at my work personally they they get a, a computer Oh, a Windows computer, any computer really, but mostly Windows. The first things they do when they get this computer are turn off UAC, user account control, because they don't like the annoying pop-ups, and disable updates for, I don't know, because they don't like the periodic reboots. I don't fucking know. So many people I know do this. They, they just turn off updates. Don't, don't do it. Why? What that, this this shit is the reason we we install updates. <sighs> Hackers love people like you. <laughs> they love the fact that people are stupid and they're lazy. And I mean, it's not even stupidity, really. It's 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 laziness. 
uh, if, especially for the professionals, because you know this a lot of the people who were hit today, or they were organizations, and they were hit by the the nastier portions, the PS executive thing, because the the perpetrator was able to get into their internal network externally. That should never happen. Never. Period. <laughs> if you are a professional network administrator, that should never happen. Nobody gets into your network externally. Period. <laughs> and so many organizations were hit. And then all their computers got hit. It's just... That's just lazy incompetence at that point. Uh, anyway. Um, let's see what else. I don't know how much longer I'm going to go. Um, I could talk in more detail about other things. Um, it doesn't look that there's too much news. It's a lot of people just saying the same things over and over again. Yeah, complex pet you like. War yeah. Ransomware outbreak worse than WannaCry. Yeah, I mean, this is like the the 500th person to say this, and I guess to these people it's still news. If you're watching me, you knew it before all these people. Oh, okay, here it is. Windows Management Instrumentation Command and Scripting Interface. I, okay, I've never used that before. Um, but I wonder if it's a enterprise utility or something. One of those administrative, third, or not third party, external utilities. I've never used it. I'm going to look it up actually. What is this? WMIC. If I look up WMIC, it's going to be all about. <laughs> Oh, okay. There's actually nothing in that top results. Um, Windows Management Instrumentation. What is Windows Instrumentation? <laughs> uh. Is that like a a, like a web-based console where you can manage a, a number of computers? That's what it sounds like. machine to manage several other machines and um, d the WMIC is the command line version of that and now you can see why if you had access to that as a hacker that could be pretty powerful that makes sense to me so I would assume that you, you find a way to you, you probe some things and find out if the you know, a server, they have this installed. It's like, oh, look, you, oh, you, you're a WMI, sir? Oh, well, here's, here, why don't you take this packet? And then they get in there and they run some commands and boom.
Do not pet. Yes, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I love this comic. We need. <laughs> That's what I've been saying. <laughs> install, install a box. Audit. Apply patches. <laughs> Classic. I am gonna retweet this. Ah, oh, oh, you're essential reading at this time. How much, how much new stuff do they have here? Okay, so I, WMIC uh, is able to, to, Sneak in and sneak steal password hashes. Password hash is just. It, it's not accurate to call them hashes. If, if you hash a password, you take a password and you apply a cryptographic function to it such that it's completely jumbled and there's no way to get back the original, original password. Impossible. A uh, hash is a one. Think about it. If if this were an actual password hash, you're you're a, a evil guy. You steal all the password hashes. Okay, now you want to connect, and you have the username and you have a hashed password. You have no way to get back the original. You don't know the password. It's useless. It's useless data. A, a pass, an encrypted password is only useful to a hacker if he can uh, if he can decrypt it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, this is. I, I, I haven't really mentioned this yet. Is it well written and obfuscated to protect? You? That is an understatement. I mean, this 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 software is absolutely terrifying. It it is so sneaky. It's so. No. It's so professional. It, it's the kind of thing you'd expect to come from the NSA. Now, we do, we do know part of it came from the NSA. In fact, two parts of it came from the NSA. But the, the stuff we haven't seen before, it is scary good. It, it, if, these are, if these are just like scumbag, you know, bro, Russian hacker group, and this is what they're capable of? Be fucking scared. It's good. I mean... And, it, you know, it seems like... Um, I mean, if, if you're smart enough to write this, let's think about this. You're, you're smart enough to write software this good. You obviously looked at what happened with WannaCry. Maybe you, you were even you even did WannaCry. It's very likely the same guys. Yeah. Okay. WannaCry didn't quite work out. Let's do better. But you know you're not going to get many bitcoins because. It, Obviously, if you're if you're running on an email server, like uh, if, if you're doing it by email, 
and you're relying on an, a single email address to receive your bitcoins and tens of thousands of computers. You know you're never going to get that. You, you, you know you're not going to get any money out of this. Uh, there, there, okay, let's see. Okay, yeah, no, this is what they're talking about here. Oh, I see. Okay, so send your bitcoins there. Send your wallet ID and personal and in, in, oh installation key. Oh, I see. So you you have your your public key for your um, your, your encrypted desktop. Uh, you, you take that uh, or you send it to them. Theoretically, you send it, your public key to them. They take the secret key, the private key. And send it back to you. That's Maybe they're keeping everyone focused on this so they can do something else. I mean, if they wanted to freak out a bunch of security experts, this would be the perfect way to do it. If you wanted to get a bunch of money, this would be a retarded way to do it. Interesting. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, exactly what I just said, yeah. The supervision, yeah, the supervision was just put his own skin deep. That was the decoy. Um, the, the nasty part was hiding beneath it. Exactly. Exactly. So these guys are thinking the same kind of thing as me. I don't, I, I it, I don't think they just want to cause damage. Like, they're basically, this is, they're too smart. They know that they get hit, but nobody gets infected. That, that's, that's top skills right there. They're just like, how do they detect that without knowing the details that we already know? Maybe they're just very on top of it. Like they were, they saw the news, and their their security guy was on it. You know. Maybe like me, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm an expert, but I've been on it all day. I've been paying attention. Um, and that guy maybe just knocked it all out.
Um, Megan was to take penis executives. What is this? I, okay, now I gotta look into this. I should know this as a security guy. Oh, is this a software called Sagan? Let's see. Alert any. I, I, don't, I don't understand this code. What is Sagan? I should know this. Not really. I can't know everything. Oh, oh, what? Oh, rule sets for Sagan. You can tell me what Sagan is. Sagan is an open source, high performance, real time log analysis and correlation. And then see it. In, I see. This would be excellent if I were a network administrator. I'm not going to run this on my personal <laughs> But this is very good to know if I ever... I, mean, I don't ever want to be a network guy. Man. I might be a, uh, you know, a pen tester or something, but... I'm going to South Korea. You know, he got to say, oh... That's about enough. Uh, this will be up for anyone to watch the whole thing. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you found it informative, entertaining, useful, helpful. Any of the above. At least one of the above. Take care. Thanks, guys.